welcome to the Strong and Milks channel, where we share the whole truth. No matter how ugly these facts are, we'll expose them for what they are. There are signs that Fukushima has entered the Atlantic under the South America it is going through the Bering Strait above North America. A huge die-off of fish was recently captured in Argentina. Last year we documented large fish die-offs in the neighboring country of Chile. This would appear to be the first time a radioactive plume of water has entered the Atlantic Ocean. Also uranium-235 is being detected in Alaska and has coincidentally the west coast of Alaska has been melting at extraordinary rates. With the Bering Sea open up further, this will give Fukushima particles a passageway to the North Atlantic. The radioactive plumes from Japan have not stopped. It's a scary thought to think that 40 years of spent fuel in four poles with four reactors in meltdown could be enough to kill off most of the Pacific Ocean. And now we need to start worrying about Atlantic seafood. Scientists from the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have discovered what they claim is an atmospheric aerosol particle enriched with uranium, which is used in nuclear fuel and bombs. This is uranium-235, a heavy isotope, which they found 7 kilometers above Alaska's Aleutian Islands. So it has to be pretty small particle for it to be, considering how dense it is. And you know, one of these little small particles can go into your lungs. And it's bye-byes. So it's by for the first time in over 20 years of observations. Specifically used for making nuclear fuel and bombs. Analysis of wind trajectories and particle dispersion model results show the particles could have originated from a variety of areas across Asia. The study cited China, Japan, and North Korea. Let's not fool ourselves. Japan has let out tons of radioactive waste into its ocean on purpose and also explosions at Fukushima Daiichi that we witnessed after 311 shortly after. Fukushima nuclear power plant is a possible source. Definitely not from a natural source. Yeah, some asshats are saying it could have been from a volcano. The Alaska Barren Sea has lost a third of its ice in just eight days. Globally, sea ice is at record lows as the polar regions warm faster than the rest of the planet. Along the Alaska coast is affecting people's lives. In just eight days in mid-February, nearly a third of the sea ice covering the Bering Sea off Alaska's west coast has disappeared. That kind of ice loss and the changing climate as the plant warms is affecting the lives of the people who live along the coast. They were starting to get into panic mode, said the island residents. Some of the communities are reeling. The satellite says scientists use the monitor of the sea ice, look at the extent of the ice, but they don't read the thickness of it. The satellites say that there's ice there, but it may not be ice that people can work with. The Arctic loses its cool. The Arctic is often referred to as the world's refrigerator. Cool temperatures there help moderate the globe's weather patterns. Now it seems like that refrigerator may have come unplugged. They want to blame the CO2 when it was really there, Mox Fuel from the Fuku. As a scientist, it's really shocking to see some of this and then try to wrap your mind about what's happening. And at this pace, it's happening. The west part of Alaska, northern part of Alaska, that's where we have the significant ice melt. It isn't that, what a coincidence that that's where the Fukushima water would be coming from. And meanwhile, Japan ships its first seaweed farm just six miles from the Fukushima meltdowns. Yummy. You know, seaweed bioaccumulates radiation like none other, pretty much. I used to love eating this stuff, actually. I would munch this stuff down, particularly the South Korean variety of seaweed before 311. Now I just look at it and I just see radioactivity. Is green lavar seaweed as a food product? 
The Japan Times cited officials have said the seaweed had radiation levels far below the safety limit. Yeah. Just raise it uh, ten times and then say it's below the safety limit. Yeah. Marasawakawari Green Lavar features a good scent. Yawochi Okimuri, a 62-year-old member of a local fishery cooperative, told Japan Times. It's as beautiful as before the disaster. Approximately 1,659 pounds of this aqua farm vegetation was shipped to local processors after being dried to remove pebbles and other objects. It is used primarily for ramen and soy sauce. The testing farm area is about 10 kilometers, 6 miles from the Fukushima meltdown site. 6 miles. Are these people just retarded? TEPCO attempts to decommission nuclear plants. Attempts. That's going to be a fatal attempt. No such thing as decommissioning TEPCO. It has admitted that contaminated water is seeping into the ground has caused problem. Yeah, it's a problem. Although the radiation levels identified are high and a threat to human health, because no one goes there. This can get problematic anytime. If it contaminates the ocean, there is no local contamination. The ocean is global. So anything that goes into the ocean goes to everyone, says Schneider. It needs to be clear that this problem is not gone. This is just not a local problem. It's a very major thing. This is everybody's problem. This is every life form's problem. This, this is the beginning of the end. So you have the highest levels of radiation are still being reported at Fukushima Daiichi's number one power plant. So they're finding record high amounts of radiation there. And what do you know, just coincidentally there was another report just a few months ago coming out of Chernobyl that they actually are experiencing higher levels than they've ever seen around the Chernobyl plant. So even with 30, 40 years down the road, these things do not even get better. They're still significantly compounding and getting worse. But this time it's on an ocean. And it's probably about 8 to 10 times the amount of radiation at least compared to Chernobyl. It's game over. It's game over, folks.